We're taking dead aim, presented by Neogenic Stem Cell and Regenerative Therapies and Greater Golf Express. Matt Sharpstein is a member of Ryan Cabbage's Charlotte 49er men's golf team. He's just qualified for the U.S. Open in Torrey Pines with his dad, Jeff, on the bag. The two of them are getting ready to head to San Diego, and I had to get the chance to talk to the Sharpstein boys before they did so. So, Jeff, let me start with this. Um, How long in your life... Have you been on Matt's bag? And I'm not talking on a consistent basis, but when was the first time that you were caddy for your son? Uh, Good question, because when Matthew was young and he played in a lot of those uh, Pinehurst World Championship, the U.S. Kid World, I caddied for him um, in all of those. So I guess you would say since he was six or seven or eight, I, I I carry his back, uh, but then when you get older, the parents because they're crazy parents, they're not allowed to caddy for their kids. Like when so when, when he got to be like you know, thirteen or fourteen, they they're smart and they don't allow the parents to caddy. Uh, so there was a period when he was young, I caddied. Then you know when he's a teenager, I wasn't even allowed to, and then. Uh, you know, the big tournaments I can caddy for. Now, I want to ask you about this because I remember caddying for my son and running into the same thing, and we got into a couple of discussions with tournament organizers, and a couple of times we actually got some rules reversed on this because our argument was simple. When you're caddying for them when they're six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they don't know why you're telling them we're going to do what we're doing. They don't understand the nuances of why you're making certain decisions. It's too hard to explain to them. But when they're older, they are, they know just enough to do stupid things. And that's when they need someone to explain to them why we're doing certain things that we're doing or what you need to be considering. And they went, you know what? You may be right. And so a couple of times as he got older, I was able to caddy for him. If you'd have had that option, would you have enjoyed doing that? No doubt. And I think the biggest example of that was when I think Matthew was around a senior in high school and he made it to – the U.S. Junior Am at the Honors Course in Tennessee, and they made it very clear, you know, parents can come, but um, they cannot caddy. Like, my brother could have caddied, or we ended up hiring a caddy, uh, um, and it was kind of, it it drove me nuts, because I thought that I could help them a little bit, um, and and you just have to watch and... uh, you know, and, and, and grin and bear. It's all you can do. So you, you're right. It it, it kind of makes sense, but parents get so crazy, I kind of understand it at the same time. Well, now we have to get the other side of this. Matt, how excited were you for the first time when your dad could not carry the bag? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I think for, for my dad and myself, you know, we've always been best friends and we always will be. So I think that relationship – on the golf course really helps me as a player and, and off the course as well. Cause you know, you can kind of reflect on my round after cause you know, I'm, I'm going to be with him and uh, you know, I'm really excited for, for the future as well. When was the first time that you remember beating your dad? I remember like it was yesterday. It was at, <laughs> uh, I think it was at Cowan's Ford and I think I shot like 67 or something like that. And I was probably, 13 years old and we were playing the same tees but um now it's, it's just a walk in the park it's it's not even fun <laughs> well th- are you letting your dad do the dad thing and move up a tee box or two yeah absolutely but he still he just can't hang oh god he's, get, he's, get, he's getting old you know he doesn't hit it very far but um, J- jeff i'd like to say that this doesn't sound familiar but I just got off the phone with my son, who's working as an assistant pro at a club in Charlottesville, Virginia, this this summer, and it sounds all too familiar. The Sharpsteins. Matt Sharpstein is a player with the Charlotte 49ers who is qualified for the United States Open. His dad, Jeff, is on the bag. They are our guests taking dead aim. Matt, was this the first time that you tried to qualify for the Open? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah, I got exempt from the U.S. Amateur. Um, Got exempt in the sectionals and... So I had no choice but to play. So, yeah. 
That's a big deal, though, being uh, being exempt into sectionals from local qualifying, because local qualifying is a circus. There's like 10 million people trying to qualify for six spots. So if you can get into that next section, that's a big, big deal. I know. And, and the thing that, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think that sometimes on the local qualifying, it's only one day. And, you know, someone could have the round of their life. And like a player like myself or a college player that works really hard, they might not have the best day and might not make it. So I think being exempt really helped. Where was uh, sectional qualifying? Where were you able to play? Dallas Athletic Club. Oh, wow. So you had to travel to Texas to do this. I did, yes, sir. Wow. Now, that's a nice track. What did you think? The, the game is different. Uh, people don't realize I was born and raised in Texas, and I didn't realize how flat Texas was until I moved to this part of the country. And then I moved back, and I'm like, oh, holy hell, I could just roll a golf ball. It'll stay straight forever and a day. Um, <laughs> what was the? Did you get some practice rounds in, and what was your assessment of how golf was different from this part of the country to Texas? Yeah, I think we got there, um, I think, two days early. And we had to play two different courses. So um, spent one whole day on, on one course, and the next day we figured that course out. Um, I mean, it's definitely different. You know, grew, growing up in Charlotte, um, most of the courses around here are pretty similar. And then going to Texas, you know, it's just a whole nother golf course. Um, but I think uh, it, was, it was definitely – it was a golf course for me. It was long and tight. Um, and I hit my driver pretty straight and far, so – I was able to capitalize on a bunch of wedge shots, and here we are. Now, I know what your preparation is as a player. Jeff, what was your preparation for those two days as his caddy? What sort of notes were you taking? See, Charlie, it, it's all coming out now. We got down there two days early. We figured out both golf courses, and Matthew had great success. So I get what you're saying. Yes, we went down there and figured out those golf courses. Uh, but the only thing, the issue in Dallas was it rained. Uh, the, it, it rained there nonstop, and we didn't honestly think that there was a good chance we weren't even gonna. They weren't even gonna play it because it was so wet. So uh, that was the deal. Um, so wherever your drive landed, that's where it was gonna be, and uh, the greens were really soft. So. And we're spinning really good. But, um, yeah, we got down there. We had a good practice session once we finally got it in and uh, um, figured out the greens. The greens were fairly slow compared to what Matthew's uh, used to. But they were rolling really good. And, uh, you know, we played aggressively. This is the first time, you know, it's not like playing a college tournament where you're part of a team. We We set it up like, you know, he had nothing to lose, you know, so we played a little bit more aggressively um, and and had that, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter type attitude, and that worked out well for him. Now, by nature, is one of you more conservative on the golf course than the other? And by that, I mean, did, did one or the other of you have to make an adjustment in philosophy for this? Uh, I, don't, I don't really think so. I think we both know when to be aggressive and, and know when we just need to hit the middle of the green, wouldn't you say? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, we we played, the whole idea was to play aggressive once we got down there. And there were a couple holes where you couldn't hit driver and there were a couple holes where you could not go at the flags and we were happy with pars on those. And the other ones, even on some 200-yard par threes, we're pretty aggressive at going at the flags. The Sharpsteins, Matt Sharpstein is with the Charlotte 49ers, and he has qualified for the United States Open. His dad, Jeff Sharpstein, is on the bag. They're our guests taking dead aim. So, Matt, tell me about that, that inevitable wait of when you finish at sectionals to when you find out that, oh, my gosh, I've made it. Yeah, um, after we finished 18, uh, we just, we had a quick lunch and then right, went right back out. So I didn't really even look at scores. Um, I shot two under for the first round, and I was a little upset. I left a couple shots out there and actually finished with a double bogey um, and then played three more holes, and then they called it off for the day. And that was when I looked at scores and kind of knew that I needed to make something happen if I wanted to go to Torrey Pine. So they called it because of weather, and then you had to go back out the next day or later in the afternoon? Yeah, so they 
we waited for like an hour, and then they just said, we can't play, we can't finish today. So we had to go back out the next morning at, uh, I think, 8 a.m., and then ended up playing another – we played till hole 17. I was in 17 fairway, um, and I was at 9 under at that point. So I kind of knew. But then I had a five-hour – it was close to five-hour delay um, – we finished at like 12 and then went back out at about 4.30 and uh, had to finish my last two. But I was leading at that point, so it wasn't as much pressure as, as I wanted. That's still kind of tough to just, you know, you just have two holes to play or a hole and a half to play. You know you've got that cushion and you just, I would think the hardest thing is just, you know, at that point you yeah, really that's find that's yourself that's playing that's not to lose instead of playing to win. You're just playing not to screw up. And I imagine that's hard because you get into trouble when you play like that. Yeah. Um, so in 17 fairway, I actually I had, I was in the rough and I was kind of scared of hitting a flyer. Um, so I took less club and actually did catch a flyer. Um, and then kind of glad I did still hit it over the green. And when I got that up and down, you know, I, I knew I could have made a triple on the last hole, um, and still would have made it. So just took out driver and hit it as hard as I could. <laughs> Jeff, what was it like when that putt sank and you're standing there and all of the hours, not just in tournament play, but all of the hours you've spent with your son on the golf course, on the range, all these years, and you're looking at him and you're like, my God, my son just qualified for the U.S. Open. What was that like? Uh, hard to explain, except uh, there were tears and some high fives and hugs because at that point, there's not a crowd watching, like a lot of match right. tournaments, even because there's no crowd. So uh, we let out a loud roar, um, and I was just so proud of them. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, those last two holes were, uh, there was a lot of thoughts going through my head when you're leading it, and you could, you know, the opportunity's there to blow a lead. Uh, he made a great, like, eight-foot putt for par, a good up and down on 17. And then on 18, he knew it. He was he was just in the right state of mind the whole the, the whole qualifier. And on 18, he hit his drive. I don't know about 340, uh, <laughs> and had a had a wedge in. Uh, and I told him when we were walking up, he because we knew at that point. I said, Matthew, where you hit that drive? He was in front of me. I said, There's no divots up here. Will you just hit that drive? Because <laughs> he was pumped. Uh, and uh, so we got up there. He had 12 foot putt for a birdie. Um, he lagged it up there and tapped it in. And oh gosh, uh, such a great feeling. A lot of hard work, uh, and 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 he really deserves it. So we'll go we'll go play Tory Pine. Matt Sharpstein is with the Charlotte 49ers golf team. He's qualified for the U.S. Open. His dad, Jeff, was on the bag at sectionals and is going to be on the bag at the Open. There are guests taking dead aim. So now we do move to the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. I've always wondered situations like this where you're an amateur, you're a college golfer, and you qualify. And I imagine your first question is, okay, what next? Where do we stay? How do we do this? How do we do that? Does the USGA help you out a little bit? Yeah, they'll uh, they they'll point us in the right direction. They've been really good about communicating with me and when I'm going to get there, flights, and um, providing a courtesy car um, if we're going to stay in the hotel and stuff like that. I just had to fill out a, a form and I actually just got another email uh, about when I'm arriving and everything. So it, it's not as stressful as it sounds. What about some fantasy stuff, some setting up some practice rounds? Is, are there people that you've reached out to and said, hey, can we get in a practice round? Yeah, so um, my assistant coach is actually pretty good friends with Webb Simpson. Um, and I actually spoke on the phone with him yesterday, and he was really excited about playing with me. I think we're going to play on Tuesday. Um, and I think I, I grew up playing – or not grew up, but in college. I played a lot with Victor Hovland and Colin Morikawa. Sure. So I think i um, going to set something up with, with them too, either Monday or Wednesday. Um, try to get something with the big guys. I don't really know how it works in practice rounds and majors, but um, you know, I definitely, if, if the opportunity is there, I'm going to try and tackle it. Jeff, are you nervous about looping in an event with professional caddies? I mean, I'm nervous. 
Yeah, because this is the first. I mean, think about it. This is Matthew's first attempt at playing a PGA Tour event. Uh, we've never even tried to qualify. So his first event is a, a U.S. Open major. Uh, am I nervous? I mean, I'm not nervous. I know what to do. Um I'm just nervous that we're between a seven iron and an eight iron, and I pick a seven iron, and he nukes it over the green and makes double bogey. So that's that's my only fear. Uh, um, but we're excited about it. We're going to try and get Matthew in the same state of mind he was uh, at this qualifier, just kind of freed up and uh, uh, nothing to lose and uh, – I would I, – so no, I'm not nervous about it. I'm just kind of nervous uh, about the whole thing. Well, guys, I wish you the best of luck, not just to someone who's in the media in the Charlotte area, but as a dad who has spent countless hours with his son playing junior golf and knows exactly the feelings and emotions that you guys have. I wish you all the best. Uh, make the dang cut. How great would that be? Yeah, I mean, it's a tournament, so I'm just going to – treat it like any other tournament and and uh honestly just try and go out and play the best golf as i can and see where that puts me after sunday 